So Google Docs, not even recently, a little while back, uh, introduced smart chips into Google Docs. Uh, so Google has had these around for a little bit of a while, but I don't think a lot of people know they are. But when you open a new doc, typically nowadays, you do see at the top here that there are some smart chips and other options are there just to let you know that they are there. Uh, now, on the left here, you are seeing actually my school account, which is a workspace account with some more of the premium features. On the right here, you are seeing my personal account. So I want to show real quick the difference between these two. So if I go up here to insert, you're going to see smart chips as one of those options. And then you're going to see a whole list of smart chips that you can add in there. And it will show us what some of these can do. So I can add in, again, on cover, date, people, file, calendar, events, place. Talk about what that means a voting chip. That means you can have people vote on the document. You can have a stopwatch, which does what stopwatch does, timer, and then variables. Then there are placeholder chips too for when you don't have the information out, but you want somebody to be able to add the information later, like the date, person, file, calendar, event, place. All those very simple. We'll see those in a second. So you see all those options I have on my workspace account, my school account. If I go to my personal account and I go to insert smart chips. Now you see I have a lot fewer options. I don't see that timer. I don't see the stopwatch. I don't see the voting one. Um, I don't see those on my personal account. So again, these tools are not available to everyone all the time. Um, so it doesn't matter which type of account you have. So if you don't see what I see, it's because of the account you have. So again, you may have this on your school account, but you won't have this on your personal account. So I'm going to go and just focus then on my workspace account so we see as many of those possible. So there are two ways to do smart chips. One is you easily go to insert smart chips and select what you want. Like let's say I want to insert a date and then I can select a date like today, click OK. Boom, it puts a little chip in there. So it puts the information in there a little bit more. Well, it's a nicer looking way. It takes up less space. It's just easier to have in there. And then I can even go back to it if I need to change it later. I can even add a time to it. I even have more features in there. Like I can actually have a meeting book around that time. Um, and I can adjust how it looks. Again, it's all about preferences, how you want that to look. So I'm going to delete that. Now, that's one way is just, again, insert smart chips and then select what you want. Another way is to just use the at symbol. So if I do at, you can see I get some options right away. I see people. I see all my smart chip options. I can even see building blocks. This is another feature inside of Google Docs that you may not be aware of. Uh, you can add in, like, say, if I do the meeting notes here. You can see that I can go to any one of my meetings here and I can add those notes, uh, but I won't do that. Uh, you don't need to see my notes. Uh, and then code block, product roadmap. This is kind of like a template here. So you can kind of see I can use that. Uh, I have a whole different video all about that. You can see that later. But if I keep going down, I can even add in files here or calendar events. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and pick a couple of these. So again, obviously date you saw that, drop down becomes a simple drop down where now I can create you know, if I have preset drop downs I created before, I can create a new drop down list. And it's where I can give people options. So, this is kind of like if I want to organize something, give people options. Like, uh, one thing that we do is, you know, we can say status. So, like, not started, um, you know, started, but not a lot, you know, and finished. You can put whatever you want in there. So, the nice thing about that is then that becomes a drop down. And I can even go in and make these different colors. So um, we will say like red, yellow, green. There we go. Say boom. So not started as red, started but not a lot. Finish, of course, can word this a lot better. And again, I can easily delete that. So I can put those into tables and put those into a lot of things. Let's go look at some of these other ones. Um, voting chip. This is a fun little one. You have different ways people can vote. You can do a custom one. Simple plus, you can put hearts, if you want people to heart it, you can put thumbs up, up with thumbs up. That means that somebody can click this and vote yes or no. You see, I'm clicking it multiple times, but I only get one vote. So different editors can get different, will each be able to vote on this. <clears throat> stopwatch does the same kind of thing. You go in here, it acts just like a stopwatch. When I click it, it starts. Click it again, it stops, and I can click reset if I want to. Very simple tool in there, but it's nice to think about if you need to have students, like if you want them to practice how long their speech is going to be, boom, put the stopwatch in there. Uh, if you want to know how long something's going to take, like even in a science lab, you could be using the Google Doc in there, using the built-in stopwatch there, boom, your data is right in the Google Doc. You don't need a separate thing. It's great. So for as a science teacher myself, I would use that stopwatch a lot for any of the labs that we're doing. Same thing with the timer. I can put a timer in there. So this would be great if you're wanting to set... Um, 
how long it should take at minimum or a maximum to work on something. You can also do this for yourself to say, hey, I need to work on this section for 10 minutes. Boom, I'll put a timer at the top, 10 minutes, boom. And I'm just going to keep focused on working on this until that 10 minutes is up. That's a nice little thing to be able to do, uh, especially for like me. You have a little bit of the squirrel and you will say. Um, so, and then placeholder chips. Placeholder chips again. Uh, like let's say I didn't know the date, but that's something I'm going to have later. So later on, I can put a placeholder chip now. Then later on, when I go over it, I can select that date and time and all the same things I would do before, but it's already there. So I know exactly where I need to put it, what I need to put there. So now the way you kind of look at this is that these smart chips give you some more options where you can easily place information um, that you can use later on. Like the place one, you can see this is actually a Google Maps you can put in there. So like, let's say um, the Iowa State University. And then, boom, I'm just going to pick Iowa State University. I can put that right in there. And then when I click on this, I can get pretty much the Google Maps information all about that. You can get directions through there. So you can be very specific. You can put an address. You can put anything in there. So the way you can kind of think about this, and that's kind of what you look at if you look at the building blocks, is kind of where they put some of those smart chips in there. So like uh, a review tracker. You can see there's smart chips in here for people, for status. And you can put other ones in there. You can put a date in there. You can put all that stuff in there. So these smart chips are a way to add a little functionality to make things a little simpler, a little easier, a little better formatted. Um, but if you have a workspace account, I'm going to make sure to point this out one last time. You have, you can have the voting chip stopwatch and timer, which are ones they don't get to see in other places. But I think there are a lot of ways you can use those in the classroom with students, especially the voting chip that you have them all vote on a topic or they could have as they're working as a group, let's say in a group of four students, as they're trying to determine what things they need to be working on, they put a little voting chip on the different tasks and they can all of them put their votes for what they should prioritize on or what topics they should focus on or as they're making changes, you do that too. Uh, the stopwatch and timer, there are all these times that we need to identify time. Um, and again, as a science teacher, you really should be looking at those timers and stopwatch. Those would be a great way to keep track of the data in a Google Doc, one place. Use it as your lab journal. Um, easy to record the data. You don't need other tools. Simple and easy. And you won't run out of batteries in your stopwatches when the kids hit them too many times during class period. Not that that happens. So look at the smart chips. Try to find some ways you can use them. They're really cool. And hopefully you have access to all of them.